If you look at this member with the loading of P, what if we change the loading to this or this? Are they the same? From statics, we know that these three are equivalent systems since the resultant force in each case is the same. But close to the area of application, the stress and strain distribution in these three cases will be different. There will be different situations of local distortions. But if we look at the region further away from the edges, further away from the area of load application, then the stress distribution evens out, and in each case, the stress can be considered an average value of P over cross-sectional area A, and this is known as the song Fenon principle. This is an important principle that enables us to use approximations in our stress and strain analysis. In general, for a member subjected to axial loadings, like in this case, the member is subjected to two concentrated forces, P1 and P2, and a distributed force with load intensity Px as a function of location, what is the total deformation of this member under the axial loadings? What is the displacement of NB relative to NA? I will demonstrate how to derive the general formula. Let's pick an arbitrary location at x and look at a differential element with the length of dx at this location. If we isolate this differential element and try to draw a free body diagram of it, it is held in equilibrium by the forces nx, which is the internal normal force at this location. And under these forces, the differential element elongates by a small displacement d delta. And according to the definition of normal strain, epsilon equals to the change in length, in this case d delta, over the original length dx. Remember I mentioned before that just like stress, strain is also a variable that is a function of location x. Therefore, d delta equals to epsilon times dx. And for elastic material, Hooke's law applies. So epsilon equals to sigma over Young's modulus, and sigma equals to normal force n over cross-sectional area A. Therefore, the total deformation delta of point B relative to point A equals to the integration of d delta from point A to point B. Point A is at x equals to 0, and point B is at x equals to the total length L. Therefore, delta B relative to A equals to the integration of internal normal force N over cross-sectional area A and Young's modulus E, integrated from x equals to 0 to x equals to L. Normal force, area, and Young's modulus could all be functions of location. This is the displacement equation in the most general form. Here, I would advise you to be very careful that in this equation, the force has to be internal normal force. Let's look at this example. If we know the dimensions of this linearly tapered beam, and we know the loadings, we need to determine its total elongation. For this, we are going to use this equation to calculate the total elongation. And in this equation, we need to know n, the internal normal force, a, the cross-sectional area, and e, Young's modulus. And Young's modulus is given and is a constant for this being. However, the internal normal force and cross-sectional area are both functions of location x. Therefore, we need to determine those first. Since the shape of this beam changes linearly from the given dimension, we will be able to write the function for the height as a function of location x to be the linear function 0.002x plus 0.01 in the unit of meter. Therefore, the cross-sectional area at any given location x equals to the height multiplied by the th thickness 4 millimeter to be 8 times 10 to the negative 6 power x plus 4 times 10 to the negative 5th power in the unit of meter squared. So that is the function of cross-sectional area. We also need the function of internal normal force. And for that, if you still recall, we learned in statics, we're going to use the method of sections. 
and we are going to imaginary cut this member. And now the internal normal force is exposed to be external. This completes the free body diagram of this section, and we can write the force equilibrium equation along the x direction. Don't forget to include the resultant force of this distributed load with the load intensity of 2 kN per meter. This is calculated by integrating this load intensity from x equals to 0 to x equals to x. Therefore, from this equation, we can calculate the internal normal force to be 2x plus 10 in the unit of kN or 2 times 10 to the third power x plus 10 times 10 to the third power in the unit of newton. And now we know both the internal normal force and cross-sectional area as functions of x, the position. Young's modulus is still a constant. We substitute them in into the equation and do the integration. Integrate from x equals to 0 to x equals to the full length, 5 meter, and get 1.786 times 10 to the negative second power meter, which is about 18 millimeter, and that is the answer we're looking for, the total elongation of this beam under the axial loadings. Let's look at this example. We are going to follow a similar approach to find the total displacement of this copper bar under the axial loads as shown. However, please notice how this example is different than the previous one. Notice how the cross-sectional area of this copper bar is not continuously changing. Also, this bar is not subjected to any distributed load, but instead is subjected to concentrated loads only. We will first draw the free body diagram of this entire member and then solve for the external support reaction at the fixed support at point A by writing the force equilibrium equation along the x direction and solve for Fa to be 28 kilopounds. And then we need to determine the internal normal force as a function of location by using the method of sections. But because the load situation changes at point B and point C, therefore we need to section this member three times, first time between point A and B, then between B and C, and then third time between point C and D. So let's first section a member between A and B and expose the internal normal force NAB. To solve for the internal normal force NAB, we write a force equilibrium equation again and then NAB equals to 28 kilopounds, which is a constant anywhere between point A and B. Then we section between point B and C, expose the internal normal force MBC, write the force equilibrium equation, solve for normal force MBC to be 12 kilopounds, which is also a constant anywhere between point B and point C. Lastly, we section between point C and D, expose the internal normal force NCD, write the force equilibrium equation again, and solve for NCD to be 20 kip, which is again a constant anywhere between point C and D. We can summarize the internal normal force using the normal force diagram, which shows what the normal force is anywhere along this member. Now we know Nx, the internal normal force, as a function of location. The cross-sectional area and Young's modulus are all given. Therefore, we can use this equation to calculate the total displacement delta. However, because this member can be divided into three segments, segment AB, segment BC, and CD, and within each segment, the internal normal force is constant, cross-sectional area and Young's modulus are both constants as well. Therefore, this equation can be rewritten into a special equation, which is the total displacement equals to the summation of NLAE. N is the internal normal force constant within the segment, L is the length of the segment, A is the cross-sectional area, and E is the Young's modulus. Since we have all the values, substitute them in. Make sure your units are consistent. 
do the calculation, and then we can get the total displacement is 0.032 inch, and that's the answer to this problem.